huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. More about that later on. Hello friends, in this new landscape photography processing tutorial, I'm gonna teach you my favorite way to non-destructively edit my raw files using Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. Now you don't need Lightroom for this, you can also use Camera Raw. Um, but yeah, this really was a game changer a few years ago for me and my processing. So I wanted to share it with you all. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got this image right here that I took in the Dolomites, a beautiful sunset over the mountains, nice warm glow on the mountain here, some warm glow in the clouds and some nice cooler tones in the clouds. Um, now I also did uh, this edit right here, which, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, let's say you were processing and I don't know, you were celebrating how great the sunset was and you had a few too many drinks perhaps and you're like, oh, this looks pretty good. And then you went through, did all your Lightroom edits and decided, okay, we're going to bring this into Photoshop to do some dodging and burning and do all the other edits. So, you know, you take this, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And then you spend like an hour adding layer after layer of, you know, different different effects and you're cloning and distorting things and, you know, just making the image look absolutely perfect. And then you realize later on, oh, wow, the colors are crazy and, you know, I need to shift the white balance. Well, as soon as you start doing that here in Photoshop, you're going to start getting a lot of color banding and compression. These files just aren't really meant to be cranked that far once they're already uh, TIFF files. Because basically when you're editing these files in Photoshop, you know, you say edit in Photoshop, you're not actually processing the raw file anymore. You're processing a TIFF that is converted by Lightroom. Um, so, you know, at this point you would have to say, okay, well, I, I either need to shift the colors in Photoshop and just sacrifice the quality, although <laughs> with this edit, we kind of already sacrificed the quality, but, uh, or you got to redo the entire photo, which maybe in this person's case would be the better call. So what if we could take this background layer, this, you know, initial background layer and just shift the white balance and take down the saturation and do it all at the raw level? Well, you can with smart objects. So let's go ahead and close this out go to Lightroom, take the same file and go edit in. And instead of doing edit in Adobe Photoshop you know, 2021, let's do open as a smart object in Photoshop. And now you'll notice we have uh, the same type of layer, but we got this little smart object icon right on the thumbnail. So, you know, we do our edit, we go through an hour long processing session and then we say, oh no, you know, we need to change the colors. Well, now we just double tap on the thumbnail and it brings up Adobe Camera Raw. And then we can go through here and just, you know, kind of bring this stuff down to uh, maybe to be a little more subtle or, or more to our liking. And then we just need to tap OK and that should update the file here in Photoshop. And it does a lot more than this. So let me show you a really practical workflow of how you can use these smart objects. So we're gonna go back into Lightroom here and grab this file that um, I think is a little bit more subtle. I'm gonna do edit in, open as smart object in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna rename this background. And we can actually use these smart objects as many times as we want. We can make a bunch of copies of this smart object layer and use it for a bunch of different effects. Like let's say we wanted to vignette this image. Well, we could do that on a smart object. Let's say we wanted to dodge and burn the image. We could also do that on another smart object. Um, or, you know, just do slight color adjustments and we can do it all at the raw level using these smart objects. Now, you can't just drag and copy the smart object because if you do that and make another layer and you go into Adobe Camera Raw, it's actually going to change and adjust both layers. But to get around that, we just need to right click and you wanna click on new smart object via copy. It's very important that you do this every single time you wanna make a new smart object. Let's make a slight vignette 
to the sky of this photograph. We're gonna double tap our smart object layer and we're gonna bring down the exposure a little bit, maybe bring down the contrast and the temperature, click OK. And now we can add a mask to the smart object. So we're just gonna click this button right here for a new mask. Go over to the gradient tool over here. Make sure we are set up here to the radial gradient, black to white or white to black. And go from the center, make a nice soft circle. You can see what that did to our mask here. So, uh, you know, revealing the darkness through the sides in white. And now let's take a brush tool, fairly soft brush. We can increase the opacity here. And we're going to want to brush in with black to conceal this layer more. And we can just brush that out of the area that we don't want the vignette. All right, and now just a quick word about our sponsor, Skillshare. As a photographer, I've found one of the best ways to stay inspired is to explore different mediums of creativity. So I popped over to Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands of classes to see if I could find something new. I found this awesome class called Watercolor Your World by Rosalie Hazlett. All the classes were super well taught and really engaging. Whether you're just getting started or a pro, you can find classes at any skill level. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's live classes and experience real-time inspiration. With Skillshare, you can connect with others and enter a community filled with encouraging and inspirational creatives. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, back to the tutorial. So now we've created a vignette here in Photoshop using the raw file, using a new copy of the raw file. Now, of course, you could do a vignette, you know, just using a curves adjustment and uh, using the mask. But what is cool about this is you can always go back and adjust that smart object. So if we wanted the vignette to be stronger or change the color of the vignette, like here, let's say we wanted to warm up that sky, just click OK, it's going to update our smart object on just that layer. So it's just a cool tool. Let's see what else we can do here. We can do a bit of dodging and burning. So we're just going to take this new smart object via copy and remove the mask. And for this one, we're just going to double tap. And let's increase the exposure a bit, the contrast. Maybe a little bit more vibrance in there too. Click OK. And let's make a mask. And right now the mask is white, so it's uh, revealing this layer. But if we go ahead and tap Command-I or Control-I on a PC, that's going to go ahead and uh, conceal this layer in black. And now we'll want to paint on with white to reveal this smart object layer. Now I have a tablet here and I'm going to use a low opacity here. And I just kind of brush along the mountains. Bring in some vibrance. And it's similar to, you know, dodging and burning. And again, we could adjust this. Let's say the color is a little too orange. We could shift it towards magenta or another color of our choice. But I mean, just such a non-destructive and controlled way of processing your photographs. So let's do one more smart object effect here. Um, uh, just for the sake of the, this tutorial, I don't know if I would actually do this to the photograph, but let's tap on this and do smart object via copy, remove that mask. Let's do, I don't know, dark, dark sky. <laughs> and uh, just tap in here. And let's make the sky really dark and blue just for fun. And we'll use a selection to just select the sky. Okay, bring in the whites here, bring in more of those blues. Okay, there's our new raw edit. 
on that smart object. So we're gonna, for this one, just make a quick selection of the sky and just go along the horizon. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect for this. And then we're going to use this to make a mask. And there we go. So there's our darker sky. Then we could go in with the brush tool to kind of soften this adjustment. And we're going to want to use black. And brush it on the horizon. So here's our adjustments using all different smart objects, all using the power of the raw file. So we could go in and adjust any of these layers or adjustments. Now there's definitely some limitations to processing with uh, this technique. Um, it's not going to work for every image like panos and, and things like that. And personally, I don't do it for uh, certain images. Certain images just will go through the process of Lightroom, then a little bit of Photoshop, and then I'll export it. Um, but especially for images that have a lot of colors to work with and where you see the potential for color banding, this is going to be a really helpful uh, workflow for you. Now at this point, let's say we wanted to do a little bit of cloning and just kind of finish off the image with a bit of sharpening, we would have to stamp the layer. And to stamp the layer, we are no longer going to work with the smart object or the raw file. Um, so to do that, we would just do Command Option, Shift and E on the keyboard to take all of these layers and stamp them into a new one. Or you could just take all of these, copy them to the bottom and then right click and merge layers. But either way, this would kind of be your final step. You'd want to make sure to do this after all of your color adjustments then you could go in and do a little bit of cloning and maybe you want to sharpen the image a bit. But at this point, you would be pretty much done with the photograph. Um, so super helpful. Again, not something I use for every image, but a really controlled uh, way to get the best possible results out of your RAW file. I think that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my processing, I actually just released a new Lightroom Masterclass. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.